to Serena Wiegmann's squad announcement media conference. Um, we'll get straight on to it, and I'll go first to Anton Tooley for Sky Sports News, please. Hi, Serena. It's, uh, it's nice Hi. to see you. Good to see you. Um, first off, let's start with the new players in the squad. Um, it's, it's great to see some, some new players in the squad, but uh, talk us through your thinking behind the call-ups for, for Hannah Hampton and for, for Kira Walsh as well. Yeah, well, Hannah Hampton has done very well at the club. She's a young, young goalkeeper, um, very athletic, and um, she's shown us some sustainability, and we want to bring her in, and I'm really uh, um, looking forward to see her in our squad and see how she relates to the other keepers and our, and our players uh, in the pitch. And Kira Walsh being back, I presume that's a, that's a huge boost to the midfield. Yeah, well, I haven't worked with her, uh, obviously. And I'm well, first of all, I'm very glad that she plays again for her club. Uh, she's done well, and uh, so we will bring her in. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to see her too and to meet her, talk to her, and start working with her. And Alessia Russo is the other new player in the squad. Yeah. She's only just returned, she only just started playing again. Um, what, what, what made you call up so quickly after coming back from injury? Yeah, well, she's well. She makes minutes now for the club too, so she's fit. Um, and yes, she needs to get more and more sustainability. Um, but I think she she had some good performances. Um, and and just as the other ones, I just want to see bring her in, see how she relates to the other players, and gives us an opportunity. Um, yeah, to get her in the squad. And of course, we have two games, but it's also we have also time to train uh, and see how all all the players relate uh, and. Also with um, with Alicia in our in our squad. One of it feels like she's been around for a long time, but one of the younger players in the squad still is Georgia Stanway. Um, <coughs> we saw her obviously get sent off in a big game at the weekend, and as a result, she received some rather vile abuse on social media. How concerned are you about Georgia, and how concerned are you about social media affecting uh, your players? Yeah. Well, she, um, of course, I'm very, actually, very disappointing for her, and I feel sad, felt sad for her that she, um, uh, that she had this action in, in the game and she was sent off. Uh, for her, a, a position where she doesn't play very, very often, um, and so far she did, she did okay. Um, yes, and you know, in, in in social media, it's just sometimes it's a chance to 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 get messages out. And sometimes you get reactions that you think, why do people react this way? And it's so um, disappointing that people do that, I think. And uh, I hope, uh, I haven't spoken to Georgia yet, and I hope she's fine and she just, you know, she's, she's a good woman, woman, and um, just stick with the, with the people who are around you and they know who you are. Is that a concern when you go into an international camp that if anything goes on towards the players may have to deal with this? Well, it's certainly something we have to be aware of, and we are aware of. So uh, we speak with players about it. We have uh, some a couple of international periods uh, until the, the Euros, and yes, um, this this is one of the things, one of the themes that we will speak about with our group. Finally, from me, um, since we last spoke, the proposals for the two-year World Cup have now been formalised, and we've heard from the FA; they've come out against it the leagues around Europe, lots of clubs have come out against it. Do you feel as though there is enough opposition to stop these plans? Because I know you're very much against them. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I just um, I just share all these uh, concerns, as I told last month, and I still do. Con uh, I'm very concerned about the, the load of players. Um, what I do hope is that there's going to be a day bed, a good and, uh, day bed that we take time to, to listen to what the stakeholders have to say and that what we know what the consequences or of certain choices are and i hope before choices are made and the final decisions are made that we have had this debate that we know exactly what the consequences are and that we make the right choices for the first of all for the development of the game and development of players thanks Rena. Thank you, Anton. Um, <coughs> could you start raising hands, please? I'll, I'll go to broadcasters first before moving to the written press. And I'll go next to Katie Shanahan for ITV. Thanks, Katie. Hi, Serena. Good to see you. Hope you're well. Yes, thank you. Hope you're well, too. Very well, thank you. Looking forward to next Saturday. Um, just a question, really. Just asking who will be the captain for these October <laughs> 
Uh, well, we ha we'll discuss that when the team comes together. So uh, they don't know yet. So please have a little more patience before we can uh, we can speak about that. Okay, we'll have to be patient. Yeah, so. sorry. <laughs> um, 18 goals from your first two matches. What do you now want to see from this group, especially ahead of your first trip to Wembley next week? Yeah, just continue what we were doing. We have started started some things, and uh, what I said in the last month too is that you know this, these players, this squad brings so much experience already, and there's so much talent in this team, and, um, and things things has been going pretty well also. And just add some things to our game. Um, so that's what we'll continue doing, and uh, probably um, think may, we might have uh, to do something in defense. Because, well, hopefully North Island, we expect North Island to be a little stronger than the teams we have um, played now. And um, so, so, yes, we, we won't do major different things. We just started. There has been three weeks in between. And we continue the doing things and try to do the things we did, it doing even better and, and get, get it to the next level. And finally from me, it's still a relatively young England squad. Jess Carter, Neil Stars, Lauren Hemp, Sandy McIver, Ella Toon and... Lots of women more retaining their place from the last squad. How important it is development to you as a manager? Well, first of all, you just pick players you think are the best at the moment, and yet you do have time, on, you do have space or time to to develop some players too. But it, it it starts with bringing the best squad you think at the moment, and then bring in the team that you think is the chance of winning the most, makes a chance of winning mo uh, most. Um, and yes, what we, we actually you want to do both. So you want to become better and you want to win the games. And you know when you're growing as a team, then the chance of winning has become higher too. Um, so and, and also, like there are young players, but they have had already some experience. And I think the Women's Super League is just a good, very good competition. And if you're playing a lot, um, then you have a certain level already. So at this moment, I think this is the best team. We do have some, of course, we know we still have some injuries, but I think the depth of the team is good that we can bring in this squad now for next week. And yes, I'm what you started with. I'm very excited to play at Wembley with the team. Thanks, Serena. See you next week. See you next week. Thank you, Katie. I'll go next to Katie Gornell, please, for BBC Sport. Hi, Serena. Nice to Hi. see you. Good to see you. Um, I just want to start by asking, how close was Jordan Nobbs to a recall? Yeah, of course we follow her. She's she has had, yeah, well, in, she was injured too, of course. Uh, she's fit now, but she hasn't played that many minutes. Uh, but yes, we, we we keep a very close eye on her, and we know, of course, I know her history, and she's played for the national team. Um, so yes, um, she's she's in our um, in our system that we look at. Well, of course we look at, at all the players in the Super League, but she's she's pretty close. She just needs needs to get more minutes. Okay. Um, obviously, there's no Lucy Bronze, Ellie Roebuck, or Steph Horton due to injury. Um, that's a huge number of caps and experience that's, that's missing. Was that a factor at all in choosing to bring back Kira Walsh because she is someone who's got that bit more experience? No. Um I'm not sure what, what you mean with your question, but um, yeah, I, Kira Walsh has played minutes now for her team. She's fit and she's done well with the club. Uh, so I think she's, she's the, best, uh, the best choice to bring her in the, um, the squad. So she's done really well, I think. Was there any um, pushback at all from Manchester City over Kira Walsh's inclusion, given their injury crisis at the moment? How were those conversations between... Yeah. Well, Gareth, yeah, know. there are conversations between me and Gareth, but also conversations between the medical staff. So we, we're very good connected with um, with, with Man City, mm -hmm. as as we are with other club teams too. Um, we share things, and yes, you know, um, of course we know where Kira comes from, and uh, we have two matches, we have training sessions, um, and yeah, we know that we um, we need to, you know, we need. Sometimes we might modify a little bit because that's necessary. But that's what we'll do with all the players. We just want to have them fit and fresh for the next game. And we play on a certain level. You know, the level of the training sessions is really high. Um, and when you when you work in this environment, you know that an injury can happen. But you want to make the chance as low as possible to do the right things. So that's what we're trying to do. And we also look at individuals. And some individuals need maybe a little more, little more, or maybe a little more reload or recovery. 
So and that's what that's why we have a big team, a big staff team with qualified people uh, that look after the players very well. And just finally, for me, I just wanted to ask you about the situation that's been unfolding in women's football over these past two weeks, following those allegations in the NWSL and this sort of reckoning, I guess, that seems to have happened in women's football at the moment. I just want to know what you've made um, of the past few weeks and what your reaction was to, to the things that you've been hearing. Yeah. Well, of course, it's very disappointing to hear such things occur. Um, and I think it's really strong that women step up and tell what happened. Uh, and now there are investigations, which I think is very good to investigate and know what really happened. Uh, and I hope we can just prevent these things and that we can have a safe environment for everyone, um, kids, women, boys, uh, uh, girls, um, uh, and, and that, that is safe and a fun place to be on the pitch and off the pitch. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Katie. I'll go to Emma Sanders, please, for BBC <coughs> Online. Hi, Serena. Nice to see you. Um, see I know you. you're in. Yeah, I know you were in Manchester on Saturday to yep. watch the derby. I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, and obviously, um, you know, Mary Ertz was, was playing in goal in that game. We know that, that the goalkeeping position for England is is one of the most competitive positions. Um, has her consistency over? You know, the first couple of weeks of the season put her in a in a really strong position. And you know, what did you see in her performance in the Manchester derby on Saturday that that gave you you know sort of a lot of excitement over over her England career? Yeah, yeah. I think we have more competitive positions in our squad, not only the goalkeepers, um, but yes, indeed, we have a goalkeeper squad. And what I see is, you know, she's she's in a good space, in a good spot, or um, she's doing well. She feels well. You can tell, and she had a good game. And, and I really enjoy that, that she's doing well and she's growing as I, you know, as when I look at other players, I also enjoy when they're growing and doing better. And then still, then you have to compete with the other players in your position. So yes, of course, when you grow, um, you're good, doing good in the competition and then uh, we'll see what happens after. But yes, I enjoyed watching it. And how much are you looking forward to working with Hannah Hampton? Obviously, you know, she will be in that goalkeeping group as well for the first time um, under yourself. So, yeah, how much are you looking forward to working with her? Yeah, she's very athletic, uh, goes a very natural goalkeeper. And um, so, yes, I, I'm really excited to bring her in and start working with her um, um, and, and see how, he, how she relates with, um, with the other goalkeepers and with the whole squad, of course. And, Thanks, Serena. Best of luck for the games. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Emma. Just to say, if anyone would like content um, that is embargoed for tomorrow morning, um, please just lower your hand now. Otherwise, I will assume that everything is for immediate use. So I'm looking at Tom Gary, please, for The Telegraph. Thanks, Tom. Oh, thanks, Wendy. Hi, Serena. Nice to speak Hi, to Tom. you. Hi, Tom. Could I just ask you about... You mentioned about Alicia Russo earlier on. Great to see her in the squad. I just wondered... Um, about Ebony Salmon dropping out. Have, have you spoken to Ebony and, and what was your message to her um, as she drops out, I suppose, with Alicia coming in? Yeah, I've spoken to Ebony. And um, well, the content of what I speak about, I don't share, that's between her and me, but as it's obvious that she's, uh, she has very um, a lot of players that compete with her. And I give preference now to the other players in the squad. And uh, she's a young player. So, um, uh, yeah, she, she went to the US and I think um, she's still growing. Uh, but now, um, for me, um, the other ones uh, were a step ahead of her. Okay, and just one more question, if that's okay. Um, we noticed that just like in the last camp, you've listed Leah Williamson in, in midfield. Is it are we safe to assume she's likely to carry on playing in that midfield role for you rather than the centre-back role we've seen her play for Arsenal? Yeah, I think she can play in both positions. Um, and for now, we're just looking at how, you know, in, uh, to, in our squad, what, where do we need, where, where should we need her? And, and how, 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 does the play, how do the players relate and who's available in the, in the different positions? So uh, we haven't made up our mind yet, but I think she can, you know, she can play in both positions. I think, I think she did a very good job in our international matches. And I know she has a very important role at, at Arsenal too when she plays in the back. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Tom. Alex Ibisetta, please, for Vavil. Hi, Serena. How are you? Hi, thank you. 
Um, following up on what yeah what you were talking with Tom there on Leah Williamson on, in terms of using her as that pivot as a six in the midfield rather than a center back. Um, just wanted to get your tactical thoughts on how she's been playing with Arsenal and, and kind of how she can shift that into the national team and use that in the midfield. I'm not sure what you mean. So you the well she like a center back is a different position than a pivot. Um, yes. So, well, but I, I think, well, that's we ask something different. So it's a different task, but I think she has the the qualities to change um, and to adapt to the new position or to the uh, the two positions she plays in. Before, like t like this season, she only plays in the back. Uh, I've seen her play at Arsenal also as a pivot, not much, but she has played there and she has played there before. So I think she sh she can do in both positions. And she has the, the uh, capability to adapt to a centre-back position or a pivot position. And where would you like to use her? Well, I'm, I'm not totally convinced yet. It's just also who, who, which players do we have available for those positions and who compete with who? Um, so we just have worked with her inter like in our context with the national team, just one, one international period. And I just need more time. What fits best in the team, also related to other players. So how so how do they collaborate? How's the coaching in between? It's not only like your own position and your own execution of things. It's also the 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 teamwork together. And with the the players that you have, the combination of players that attacking the defenders, you know the 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 players that can play different positions. What are you looking to do this international break? With the team, yeah, we first uh, we have um, now we have the squad. Then we have, have some some more games to play, um, and then we'll, we'll we'll figure that out this week, uh, and then make well take take some decisions not not too early, uh, and then we'll discuss it with the team first. And lastly, from me, from your point of view, obviously you've watched quite a few WSL games um, in the recent weeks. Kind of, how do you want to? Um, how do you want to imply that style of game on the national team and kind of how do you want to mix the WSL style of play with your style of play that you've brought in from the Netherlands? Yeah, I think most of all the principles they have in the club teams are, are s pretty much similar in what we do. And like in some details, we ask some other things and we just have to be really clear in what we uh, think of a, s a certain position, what the tasks are with the position. So... So for the players, it's very clear what they, we ask from them. And that can differ just a little bit from the club teams. But I think when we look at the bigger pictures, there are more similarities in, in the principles of play than there are differences. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Pentland, please, for WSL Full Time magazine. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, Serena. Hope you're well. Hi, Dan. Um, Thank you. I just wanted to um, ask you about Beth Mead and kind of how impressed you've been with Beth in the opening weeks of the season, both with the goal scoring and creation of goals for other teammates as well. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't prefer to talk about individual uh, performances of players. I think lots of players in our squad do well at their club team. And I think the evaluation of the club performance is just something from the coach of the club. And yes, we, we bring in players that we think do well at their club team. And Beth is one of them. Um, they really had a hard game against Barcelona, we know. But they recovered well this weekend again. So, you know, um, we just continue doing and hope she continues like playing well for the club like other players do too. And is it any kind of concern with Beth England um, with Chelsea? I know she's kind of in and out of the team a little bit. Um, you know, that she's not kind of starting games week in, week out. I know that she's started the last couple of games, but, you know, she seems to be in and out of the team a little bit. Yeah, well, that's that's part, you know, Chelsea has a very good squad and, you know, the competitors for her, it's just uh, uh, yeah, a big competition f in, in the team, in, the, in their squad. So um, she just, when she's in, she needs to show and, and you see that she wants to do everything to do, to do best and, and start yeah, showing <laughs> other ones what she can do. And yes, of course, when players don't play a lot, it's a concern. Uh, but by us, I know she plays at one of the best teams uh, in, in, in the Women's Super League. That's brilliant. Thanks so much and best of luck for the camp. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, Sophie Downey, please, for Girls on the Ball. Hi, Serena. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Um, good. In, in terms of... Uh, 
doing better than um, uh, many ex have expected of them. Um, with this game as well, you're at Wembley, um, uh, there's an extra level of uh, motivation for them. It's a rivalry game as well. So what do you kind of expect from them? And does that kind of make it harder to know what to anticipate? Well, I missed your first sentence because I missed some. Did you ask about Northern Ireland or about us? Yes. Yeah, Northern, uh, Northern Ireland. Ireland. What we expect yeah. from them. Yes, yeah. I heard that's, a, um, yeah, that's, that's like the more competition than it normally is because of the neighbors, I guess. Um, but I think the Northern Ireland has been growing very much. Um, the first time in history they qualified for the Euros by winning from Ukraine. And um, yeah, they, they're starting to, to build, uh, continue building on their playing style, building up, and have, they've had a good start in this qualification series. So um, yes, we expect a better team than we, than we did. Um, I, I wasn't in then, but we expect a better team uh, and a, a level higher than we have played um, last month. And about Wembley, I mean, I asked you about it last month, but it's now right around the corner. Does that, is that <laughs> anticipation really building? Yeah, well, you know, it's ob obviously it's very, very special to play at Wembley. Um, and yes, although I'm I'm very excited, but I'm also calm uh, because, you know, we play another match and we just want to play really well, get a good win, have people that come and watch us, have, that have a very nice evening and, and enjoy themselves and also people that watch on the TV enjoy themselves and then we'll be happy. And then when it's in... Yeah, just a special occasion because you're playing at Wembley. And it's the first competitive game we play there in history. So it's in, in all, well, in, in lots of things, it's special. Brilliant. Thank you and good luck. Thanks. Um, can I go to Phil Medlicott, please, for PA? Serena, um, I was just going to ask quite simply uh, if you would explain that during this international break, Ellen White uh, breaks the record, becomes England's record scorer uh, over the course of these two matches to come, because we know obviously she's pretty close. Okay, can you repeat this? Because I missed the first <laughs> sentence, sorry. Uh, you're talk uh, I so thought you're, ta you're talking about Ellen? Ellen White, yeah, obviously yeah. She's, um, she's three goals away now yes. from ma matching Kelly Smith's record. Do you oh, you said matches Kelly Smith. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she, yeah. Do, you th do you think it will happen in this international I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't look in the future. Um, and hopefully, yes, uh, but we'll see. It's very, okay, you know, she's very close. And it's like what she has reached already uh, is very impressive. And hopefully she can get some more and when that happens I don't know. Just wondered if there's anything more you could say in terms of how, how highly you rate Ellen as well I guess because I mean obviously you've worked with some fantastic uh, forwards in recent times. Um, how, how does she how does she rank? <laughs> well I don't have a ranking yet. <laughs> no she, look like we have like we got some questions about the competitiveness with the goalkeepers. I think there's also a lot of competitiveness in the in, in more positions in the squad, and one of them is like uh, the number nine position. And I think we have w some very um, good players for that position. And now we had only one international camp, and now we're going to the next one, and we're just figuring out what's best. And yes, we do have, uh, it's, it's kind of the depth for the, for the center forwards is really good. Uh, and I'm really enjoying to, pl to, to, to work with all the strikers. And it's the same for, for Ellen, and she, yes, she has a very good record so far, and it's really impressive. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Uh, Florence Lloyd-Hughes, please, for The Athletic. Hi, Serena. Um, Hi. I just wanted to follow up on uh, a couple of things. I know Anton uh, asked about the social media side of things, and you said you were going to be chatting to the players about it during camp. I was just wondering if there were specific things that you were going to be talking about or what were the, the plans were around that. Yeah, I said that we we have like on, on July six we want to have we want to have uh, um, trained or discussed all the things that we are ready to start the tournament, and we have another we have some international periods to prepare for everything, and one of the things what we will talk about also is social media, um, and and so y it's just. I think when we are totally aware of what can happen, positively, negatively, I think that's what we need to discuss. Um, we are not, you know, I'm not, and I'm a coach who say you can't do this or you can't do that. It's the responsibility of, of, of players. And um, um, as a team, I think we can benefit from social media and sometimes you can't. Um, and that's what we should discuss. 
And also just wanted to follow up on, on Wembley. Obviously, the last time England played there, it was a defeat, unfortunately, but a record crowd. Do you feel any sense of pressure going back there and, and needing a big win? Actually, I don't feel a sense of pressure. No, I'm just seeing a very nice challenge, uh, a great opportunity. Um, yeah, very great that we can play there. Um, and yes, we're going to do our best to get a very good performance. And that's what, that's what we need to do. And then at the end, we'll see what that brings us. Thanks, Rina. You're welcome. Thanks, Florence. Sandra Brobby, please, for The Sun. Hi, Serena. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to go back to something um, you raised about um, Hannah Hampton and her inclusion. I mean, you've got with her and obviously Sandy McKeever, two good ball-playing uh, goalkeepers. I mean, how much does that, how much of a benefit is that to have those ty that type of goalkeeper in your camp in terms of what you want to do in terms of your technique for yeah. The yeah well um yes we do have many many talented players in our, in our squads um and the, the, i think we have pretty much good goalkeepers in england that's kind of luxury and uh yes of course it's um it's when you're when very comfortable with your feet that helps the build up I think the first the first task a goalkeeper has is just uh, preventing goals, um, and then then comes next. But if you have you know the 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 more you have in the total picture, like being very good in defense in out of possession and preventing goals, and then you can also build up. I think and you been you are very c sustainable and consistently good at the club level and at international international level. I think you're uh, you're doing a good job. So and and that's that's what we are looking for, of course. But it's yeah, no, it's, she's a young keeper. She comes in now for the first time since I'm here, and um, yeah, I, I'm just looking forward to see the the three keepers that are in. Great, thanks, Serena. You're please. welcome. Thanks, Sandra. And finally, back to Tom Gary, please, for the Telegraph. Thank you. Sorry to be that person coming back in. I just uh, oh, had one more I question. I thought you it's left. Question. I promise. Um, <laughs> Just uh, wanted to get your thoughts, Serena, on uh, two of the squad being nominated for the Ballon d'Or Award, Ellen and Fran, and how, how pleased you are to see them recognised in that way. Yeah, well, um, yes, that, that's amazing, of course. Um, the recognition is always good. I think, you know, when players perform well um, and they get such a, big, such a big recognition, I think we should be proud of them. And I think, well, obviously, when you're playing for your national team, we're proud anyway. Uh, but yes, um, proud of them and uh, very well. Thank you so much. Just uh, good luck for the games. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. If there are no final hands to raise, um, we shall conclude the press conference. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>